I'm content creator Corey Walmsley, the founder of Aurora Corealis Publishing. I'm dedicated to helping women entrepreneurs make a big impact by turning the next page with tools, tips, and resources that empower and connect the dots through books, publishing, and more. Every episode includes me, along with a featured guest on my globally recognized show, Page Turner Studio with Corey. Hello, welcome to Page Turner Studio with Corey. I'm your host, uh, content creator Corey Walmsley. I'm also the CEO of Aurora Corealis Publishing and an author of nine, soon to be 10 books. And I'm really, really excited to have our guest on here today. She is a colleague of mine. We've been working together for several years. She's also a very good friend of mine. Um, her name is Kelly Commander, and she is the uh, CEO of K2 Creative, a visibility strategist, speaker, and best-selling author. She has a diverse professional background that includes marketing and PR, writing, and business development roles in multiple industries. So welcome to Kelly. I'm going to bring her up from the green room. Hello, Hello. Kelly. Hey, Corey. Thanks for having me. Sure. It's wonderful to have you on here. So we're going to be talking about a couple different things today because you are a visibility strategist and um, talk to me a little bit about that. Let's, let's first, you know, let the audience know what that's all about. Absolutely. So, you know, whenever I started to represent people as far as authors, coaches, speakers, entrepreneurs, I kept using publicity and PR and publicists. And um, another colleague of ours, Mary Lee, had um, called me one morning and said, you know what? you're not a publicist, you're a visibility strategist. And it's true because people hear publicity, PR, publicist, and sometimes they think negative. They think that maybe you're digging celebrities out of a hole or you're doing damage control. Whereas everybody that I and that we work with together are really positive people that have a transformational story to share and they just have really good news and they're upbeat and, and just fantastic people. So visibility strategist really describes what I do much better. Yeah, I agree. Um, and it always cracks me up when we talk about this because I am picturing you like running with your hair on fire trying to take care of somebody who just, you know, ran their car into a building or something and that is absolutely not what you do. Right, right. And, I, and it makes people question too. They see or they hear visibility strategists and they say, what does that mean? What do you do? And it's a conversation starter. So it was it was a very smart move. Yeah, yeah, and there are a couple different pieces to this. So there's like the PR aspect to it, and then there's also the inner game, which is why our show today is how to strengthen your inner game for more visibility as an author. Um, and one of Kelly's talks is centered on this inner game. So Kelly, can you talk just a little bit about um, about the uh, imposter syndrome piece that you like to discuss? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a workshop, a 90 minute workshop called From Imposter to Inspiration, getting past imposter syndrome to increase your visibility. And I have found, and this is personal too, not just with clients and colleagues, that having imposter syndrome holds you back in more ways than one. And it really holds you back and stops you from being visible, from getting interviews, from uh, taking on speaking engagements, from doing a live stream podcast, because you're, you're afraid you have that imposter syndrome. So the workshop focuses on have, having people understand what imposter syndrome is and then tips and tricks to, to overcome it. Um, we have breakout sessions where people get to talk and share in small groups, which makes people feel much more comfortable. And I really feel that um, you know anybody who even thinks they have a tiny bit of imposter syndrome needs to do some research on it and try to break free because especially authors, you know this, you have to be out there. You have to be visible at all times. Yes, absolutely. And what I think is really cool is that, you know, most people would think like, oh, how does this, you know, have anything to do with Kelly's business? But the visibility strategist kind of captures the whole thing. And where the imposter syndrome talks and everything kind of originated is from the book 21, right? Yes. Yeah, that was my chapter. My chapter was called From Imposter to Inspiration. And I wrote 
about my struggles with imposter syndrome and how I have, you know, found success between, you know, corporate jobs and then now starting my own business all without having a college degree. And I know that that is what my imposter syndrome comes from is from, I feel like I'm being held back or sometimes I feel like I'm less than because I don't have that degree or any kind of initials after my name to back up my knowledge and my expertise. Yeah, and I think a lot of people go through that uh, either in business or in their book journey too. Um, I've found that a lot to be true in the book journey because people think, you know, how much of this story do I really have to have lived before I'm, you know, qualified or credentialed or whatever to actually talk about it? And you know, we're all credentialed in our own stories. We've all lived this stuff. So I'm, I'm glad that you're out there talking about this and saying, you know, here's what it is. Here's what we need to know. Yeah, yeah, and what you know too, authors have a very hard time. First time authors have a really hard time calling themselves an author. And you know, when I do the strategy calls with clients, I talk to them about, you need to start promoting yourself as an author. You need to start saying, I'm an author, add it to your bio, you know, add it to your Facebook page, add it to LinkedIn, whatever you're doing, you have to start calling yourself an author. You wrote the book, take credit for it. Yes, I, I've found that a lot of people don't bother putting author on, you know, their bios or anything. And, you know, you meet people at a networking event, that should be something that they bring up. You know, oh, I, I do X, Y, Z. I'm also an author. We talk about that book. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people are impressed by that. They want to know, what did you write a book about? You know, how hard was it to write the book? How long did it take? People ask you a million questions. Sometimes they have more interest in that than they do what you you know, what you do for a living. They want to know that whole process of becoming an author. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really important to share that because people aren't going to buy the book unless they know it's out there. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Kelly's impactful page turner share. Kelly says that visibility is everything. All entrepreneurs, authors included, need to have a visibility plan and a personal brand strategy ready to go months before launching their book. And I couldn't agree more about this. Um, we were talking earlier and you were commenting that a lot of people wait too long to share about their book because of this imposter syndrome and it hurts their marketing. Um, what are some things that you've seen and how can they kind of work around that, you know, you know, the best they can, obviously, with imposter syndrome? Right. Um, honestly, I think that every author should choose a date weeks and weeks before the book is going to come out and make that their coming out date. They're gonna come out as an author. They're going to announce it. Of course, you know, if you're married, your spouse knows. If you have children, your children know. <clears throat> Excuse me, chances are your parents know. But that main big social media blast of, I am in the process of writing a book or I finished my book, whatever it is, show a little portion of the cover if it's ready, maybe share something about the title, you know, do something weeks and weeks and weeks in advance to tee people up so that they want to follow your journey from, hey, I'm going to be an author to, hey, the book comes out tomorrow. I need your support. And mm -hmm. like I said, they have to start calling themselves an author. And with social media, they need to join groups that have author. There's author, author groups out there. There are groups that are um, maybe focused on the type of book that you wrote. If you wrote a business book, if you wrote nonfiction, fiction, whatever it is, get into those groups and start to meet people who can help you promote your book and who, who will buy your book. You can't just write it and expect people to just buy it. It's, it's not that easy. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen that happen a lot too, where people think that just because the book is available that everybody's going to somehow find it. And I mean, if you think about like, let's just use Amazon as an example because most books are available on Amazon. If you think about that, if you go on Amazon, how many books are on there? Like probably millions at this point. Sure. And, you know, you're just lost in this sea of other books. You have to have some sort of strategy for that. Yes. Yes, you do. And, you know, a lot of what helps with that, too, is that you sit down with the clients and you help them pick the categories that the book is going to be in. Because when people are searching for certain things, there might be many, many readers out there who only focus on one type of book. You know, so the keywords and making sure people can find you is so important and that category list is is it's big <laughs> it's really big but it's really important to make sure that you're in the right category yeah yeah definitely um 
I want to ask you, what do you think about hashtags? Because I've had some people say, oh, I don't follow hashtags. I don't pay any attention to them. And then other people are saying they're super important. Make sure you use them. What What's your thoughts on that? I think, in, in my personal opinion, <clears throat> I think a lot of people follow hashtags on Instagram. Um, I know I do personally. I follow them, and then I also search for them. Um, I do think that with uh, TikTok becoming so popular, people are definitely following hashtags and searching hashtags on TikTok. Um, that's a whole new game, and you and I have discussed this multiple times about authors being on TikTok. Um, there's the hashtag called Book Talk, so it's B-O-O-K-T-O-K. And I have read that people follow that hashtag to find books to read. And that's how they follow their fam their favorite authors on TikTok and things like that. I'm sure people follow it on Facebook too. My thing is have a set of, I don't know, five to eight hashtags that are really focused on you, your business, your book. It takes mm -hmm. two seconds to copy and paste them into a post. It's not going to hurt anything. Just use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Thank you. Because um, I know it can be confusing for people <laughs> thinking like, oh, I have to have, you know, exactly this many hashtags or I have to make sure I'm doing this or I'm doing it wrong. But it is a trial and error sort of thing. And at least having something up there, you know, that, you know, people are going to be able to find you with that hashtag. So, yes. yeah, that's great. Um, and I wanted to share Kelly's being a page turner tip. So this one is share your book everywhere and with everyone. You wrote the book to help people, but how will they know about it if you don't share it? Carry them in your car, donate a copy for special events, ask permission to sell them. I think that you gave me a big long list of fabulous ideas. Um, so let's talk about that. And I also, since we're sharing, um, I wanted to share, I love this photo. This is one of the biggest ways that we were able to share the book 21. So this is Kelly's book. Oh, copies. Um, <laughs> so this was actually from the launch party that we did, which was a huge way of sharing about the book. So can you talk a little about some creative ways to share the book? Um, you know, just whatever you think is good for some of your authors. Yeah, I think launch parties are a fantastic way to do that. Um, you know, with an anthology, it's a little easier because you have multiple authors who are going to you know, pitch in on the planning, pitch in on the invitation list, get guests to come. But I will say this, that out of the 21 authors, these were the authors who were available to come that day. And of course, we all had our friends and family there, but there were a lot of people there that we didn't know because we put the launch party out there on social media. It was on Eventbrite. We had people come and I said, you know, who are you here to see? Or, you know, who do you know out of the book? And a couple of people said, nobody. I found it on Eventbrite and I thought, wow, this is amazing. Let's do it. So, you know, there's some cost involved, but I think the return is worth it. I think that getting your name out there, getting the book out there, and we also had newspaper coverage too. Um, the One of the local newspapers here in Pittsburgh covered it and wrote a short you know, column about it and put some photos in their paper. Anything helps, any kind of PR, any kind of attention helps. And it helps your credibility too as an author, if you're able to throw, this was another fantastic launch party for She Who Grieves, it was beautiful. And they had a great turnout as well. I really think that every author needs to have some sort of a launch event and truthfully open it up to the public. Yeah, I agree. And this, we, we have been to so many really fun, creative launches. Um, we were talking about another one on one of the shows um, where uh, Heidi Park Herner did like a show to do her launch because it was a sort of theatrical thing for She Who Grieves with Amy and Holly. Um, theirs was more focused on healing. So it was at like an art, arts and craft kind of studio sort of thing. Um, so you don't have to just stick with like, you know, very strict, super boring, you know, this doesn't fit me. Like think outside of the box and that's gonna get people to come and enjoy it. Um, and you mentioned about donating copies for special events. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, whether you're doing a nonprofit event, if you, um, let's say that with your business that you have a, a display table at a conference or a workshop type thing, you know, offer to put one in for a drawing so that people can win the book or offer to donate a book, you know, at your own table, have a drawing for it. And then also offer to sell the books too. It works at speaking engagements as well. I've done speaking engagements around the From Imposter to Inspiration workshop. And I've had organizations say, you know what, we want to buy a few of your books to raffle off to our employees and our staff. And then I always ask, 
that's great. Can I bring some copies to sell for people who don't win a book? And it just happened this week where I sold a dozen copies to people who didn't win the ones that they gave away for a drawing. So it, if you don't ask, the answer is no. Yes. I love that. And, you know, I've been following your journey and I've seen how you've been expanding that and expanding that. So, you know, I wanted to applaud you for that because you are not somebody who sits back and says, oh, you know, fingers crossed. I hope somebody finds my book. You actually talk about it. You get out there. You ask people when you're doing your speaking, can I do this? Um, you know, you can approach people and ask for what you want. And I agree. The answer is always no if you don't. Always um, no. I had somebody approach me, um, I was doing an event a few years ago and they had 10 people who had purchased a VIP package for that event. And they said, oh, do you want to throw out something in the swag bags? I said, you know, who are these people? What, you know, what specifically are they getting? And it turned out those 10 VIP people were my ideal audience. So I gave them a copy of the book for each of the swag bags. It was like $4 for each book. $4 to give something valuable to my ideal audience and you know what somebody actually booked my smallest uh, coaching package off of that so it was a huge win yeah and of course if those books weren't useful to those people they can give them to someone else they can take them to the half price bookstore like that was something you know whatever it is someone else is going to get the book who needs it and that might be somebody coming back to me or that might be somebody who has an easier way of writing their book Right. And another idea, too, um, I'm speaking at a conference later this year, and I had asked the conference organizer about providing a book to all of the attendees. And um, she said, let me see if I can get a sponsor. If I can get a sponsor who's willing to purchase the books, we can make sure that in, they're expecting anywhere from like 80 to 125 people that they can get a copy of the book sponsored by one of the companies who is getting involved in this conference. You know, there's creative ways of doing it that it's not going to cost a ton of money. It's not going to cost the author a ton of money and everybody benefits. Yeah, I love that. You have to work smarter, not harder. So um, I'm going to talk about my turn the page with Corey tip. Get used to the idea of your book being out there by creating a cover, um, wrapping it around your book, pretending it's yours. This is something that I actually did with one of my clients recently because you know, she was having a little trouble like picturing her book being out there. And I said, you know what, take a piece of paper, write your title, you know, print it out, whatever you have to do, decorate it, make it kind of feel like yours, wrap it around the book. So take, you know, like if this is about the size of what your book would be, just wrap it around, put a little piece of tape in there, carry it around with you, set it on your desk, whatever you need to do. And she was like, okay, this is starting to feel real. And you know, I think it goes back to that imposter syndrome where we feel like, oh, you know, this is a big fancy book. This is a big fancy book. This is my Braving the Shore. Um, you know, these are very professional covers. You know, shout out to Karen Capsuline for our beautiful covers. Um, when you see that kind of stuff all the time, sometimes it's hard to say, okay, that's going to be me. Was there anything that you dealt with when you were leading your anthology and, you know, thinking about getting it out there along these lines? It happened so fast, and you know that. I mean, I contacted you in late November, early December of 2020, and the book was out April of 2021. So, you know, to yeah. put together 21 stories and bios and headshots and a cover and the intro and outro and, you know, all that stuff, it happened so quickly. And honestly, there was not one part of the process that I didn't enjoy. I, I, everything mm -hmm. was just so fantastic. But when I actually saw that cover and I knew that was the cover after Karen and I had gone through a couple different ideas and, you know, we had different thoughts on what should be on the book and the cover, you know, the colors and all that stuff. The day that the book, because I ordered one single book to get in the mail, like before it actually launched on Amazon to the public. And the day yeah. that I opened that book at my house um, was just amazing. It's just when you hold that book in your hand and you know that's your creation that's your legacy. You know, I mean, this book is going to live on long after we're here. And this is something that your great, 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 great grandchildren can get a hold of and look back and say, wow, is that what things were like in 2021? And wow, they lived through a global pandemic. And do you know what I mean? Because a lot of the, the book is focused on how these 21 women were able to, you know, pivot, persevere, 
and really show resilience with their businesses during that first year of the pandemic. So it's just, it's a lesson. It's, you know, you're, and everybody that you work with and that we work with all have really positive transformational stories. So just run with it. Just, and that idea about wrapping another book to make it look like yours is fantastic. I think you should add though, that whenever the person does it, they need somewhere on here really huge to write their name, comma, author. Ah, uh, yes. And stare That'll at help. it. Stare mm -hmm. at it. <laughs> That'll help get it through your head for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think one of the things I liked about doing the anthology was with everybody together, everybody was kind of dealing with the same emotions at the same time, but I think we built off of each other. Cause I, like I participated in the anthology too, but kind of building off of each other and being able to see how other people were reacting. And we had several who were already authors. So I think that kind of helped everybody go, oh, okay, we can all rise together. We're all up here. We're all authors. And I think we saw less imposter syndrome and those kind of issues. No, I agree. And, and it was just so exciting for me and the other authors who were first time authors to watch, you know, you, MJ, Melanie, like all of these people who were already authors to see, see how they did things, to see how they handled things, to see what their process was. And it was just a whole, it was an amazing learning experience. And I, I think that the authors who were already authors learned from us, the people who were doing it for the first time too. It was just an incredible experience. Um, if anybody's fearful and has imposter syndrome and says, I want to be an author, but I can't do it. I really suggest thinking about doing an anthology. Now you don't have to have 21 people. <laughs> that was a big task to take on for my first time, but yeah. you know, working with people who already have the experience working with some new people who really want to be authors. It's just, it's a feel good thing. It just makes you feel amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you do a smaller anthology, like we did um, unleashing your soul level magic, and this was just 12 authors and it turned out to be a really powerful book too. So even that small group of authors, I think it was helpful to see everybody, you know, building off of each other and getting excited about each other's story, which is, you know, just wonderful. And look what's um, so happened. I'm, gonna... oh, I'm sorry. Look what's happened with the 21 book though. Look how many yeah. people are now partnering with each other. How many people are working together? How many of us have become each other's clients or colleagues? Yeah. It, it, the bonding experience is just amazing. So go ahead. I said to throw that in there because you know I love that connection stuff. Oh yeah, I love it too. I think that's been one of my favorite things to watch when we do anthologies, definitely. Um, so I'm gonna share my make an impact tip with Corey. Remember that the people you most need to help with your story can't read it if it's stuck on your computer, <laughs> which might surprise you. <laughs> um, you, uh, they may help you shift the focus. Uh, if you're if you're thinking about like you know, oh my God, who, who am I to write a book? What am I doing? Um, you know, all these imposter syndrome sort of things. Sometimes it helps to shift that focus from you to who you're helping. And I think that's been ideal for helping my clients get out there with their story is to tell them like, don't make it about you, make it about the person you're helping. Even if you have to stop and think like, who, who do I know that needs to hear this story? Um, and every time someone comes to me and says, you know, I've been thinking about my story, um, I started to share it, and every time I share it, someone says, oh, I've been through that, too. I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, what, what do you think, Kelly? I do think that's important. I think that if you're you're writing a personal story and you think more about, even if they're just pretend people, that you can help with that story. Like You might know somebody personally that, that's going to benefit from your book and from your story, but if you can just make up maybe five pretend people and focus yeah. on helping them, while you're putting the book together, I think that's huge. I think that's a fantastic way to take the focus from yourself to push mm -hmm. it out and, and talk about who you can help and how you can help them. Yeah, I love that. I love the idea of creating fake people, especially being a fiction author. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, Kelly, um, do you think that imposter syndrome around being an author ever goes away completely. Like you're ever like, oh, I'm done with that. That was uh, two years ago, and now I'm now I'm someone else. I think it gets easier. But what's really funny that you ask this is um, Maya Angelou actually was quoted saying, "I'm an author. I've written however many books that she wrote." And her quote is something you can look it up. It's something to the fact of. 
even though I've written X amount of books, I keep thinking they're going to figure me out. They're going to see that I've run a game on them. Yeah. I mean, come on, you know, I mean, somebody like Maya, like you're like, how, how can you not have the faith and the belief in yourself? So I think it changes. I think it, it, in the beginning, I think it's really, really strong, the imposter syndrome. But, you know, there's not one piece of marketing material that I put out there that does, does not have me listed as an author. There's not one opportunity that I have that I don't talk about the book or I don't talk about my chapter or the fact that I turned the chapter into a speaking career. I think that it gets easier. Um, and I think the more books you write, the more it, it, you feel like an author. I mean, think about it. You're on, you're on book 10, right? 10, 11, 10. Huh. Yeah. Now think back to whenever you wrote your first book or maybe your second book. Did you feel like an author or did it feel different than what you feel like an author now? Oh, so when I wrote my first book, um, that was like 2003, 2004, when I first started. Um, I was figuring it out on my own. Uh, I definitely felt like an immature idiot when I was doing that. Like I had no idea what I was doing, just kind of bumbling through. Like I knew this story had to get out. Um, and I had people who read it, but they were friends and they were like, oh my God, I love this. This is so exciting. And I'm like, oh, well, they're just excited because they're my friend and they get to be part of the vetting process. And, you know, of course, you know, my mom would love anything I wrote. So yeah, I think it's, it's definitely different when you get started as opposed to a few books down the line. But even so, like um, when I wrote Raven the Shore, I, I felt like that was just like, it all came together. It wasn't perfect after the first draft, but it all came together. But then as I was working on The Treasures We Seek, which is coming out this fall, um, I kept having that like, oh God, like Brave and the Shore was really good. Is this going to be good? Maybe I've, you know, that was my one one thing that was really good. I'm not going to be really good at, anymore. People are just going to say, oh, you know, that, that was good. And then they're going to talk about me behind my back. So I, I think <laughs> for me, I, I think it's changed, but there are still moments when I slip back into that, like, oh no, what if this one's the one that sucks? Yeah. And I think that's natural and that's normal. And that's a lot of what I talk about in the imposter syndrome workshop is these feelings are normal. And it's funny because someone just said to me this week, you know, I hope that people didn't pass up coming to this because if they felt that if they admitted to having imposter syndrome, there was something wrong. Oh. So that made me really think about how I approach this with people and how my marketing is going to go coming to these workshops or booking these workshops doesn't mean there's something wrong or that you have a problem. It means that you see something that you can improve in yourself, that you mm -hmm. recognize that there's something that's holding you back and you want to help yourself move forward. So that was like a light bulb aha moment for me that, yeah. you know, if there's ever a workshop where there's low attendance at a corporation, maybe it's because they're afraid to be there because they're afraid they're admitting their downfalls or that something is wrong or that it's a bad thing to have imposter syndrome and it's not no no and it's it's very normal it's very common and also wanting to improve yourself is very normal and very common and i'm glad that we live in a world today where people want to make improvements they want to change they want to you know be a better version of themselves every day so thank you for bringing your imposter syndrome workshop to the world i think that's super super important Thank you. And, your book. <laughs> um, and I, I wanted to kind of talk about the other end of it now, the um, the PR and marketing piece with the book. So we've covered a lot of the internal things. So the thing you normally think about with marketing your books, um, you know, with visibility, you know, what, what do you think was the biggest challenge when trying to get 21 out, out there or even today? It's, I think it's being a first time author. That was what was hard for me because I kept seeing all these other people who were super successful with their books and you cannot compare your success because that also causes a lot of imposter syndrome. You can't compare what an author who is putting out their 10th book, their 20th book, you know, it's, it's a build up process. And I, I know we started early with promoting the book and putting the word out there. And, you know, I even gave verbiage to the authors and said, Hey, here's some ideas of how you can put this on your social media or send a text message to your family and friends to let them know that you're part of this anthology. But I ne I don't, I'll never say that we started early enough and I don't think anybody starts early enough. 
I think the minute that you have the idea in your head that you're going to write a book and you're going to become an author, you need to start sharing it. Even if you don't know exactly what it looks like, you know, the marketing needs to start super early and you need to take people on that journey with you because people love that. They love to follow along what people are doing in their life. So and do it in different ways. Do it text message, do it social media, record YouTube videos, you know, have somebody record you as you're at your computer writing the book, you know, talk about a challenge you had writing a chapter or talk about the meeting that you had with Corey, with your publisher. Hey, I met with my publisher today and these are the big three things that I took away from our meeting that's going to help me get this book out there. There's so many ways that you can promote yourself in your book. Yeah, I think it takes a lot of being creative and, you know, getting over that kind of hump with imposter syndrome to be able to do it. So I'm glad that we got to talk about that today. Um, and I know one of the things we are always talking about, <laughs> the two of us, usually off camera, um, is, you know, some of the things you just suggested with making sure that people know about the book, making sure people know it's coming. Um, are there any other things that you suggest that the author can do that kind of helps the PR effort? Well, they need to have a social media page of some sort focused on the book. Not everybody can build a website. Not everybody has the know-how or the knowledge, but clients that already have a website, they need to dedicate a page of their website to the book. If you have the know-how, if you have a teenage kid, like we have an author who just had their, their teenage daughter create a beautiful website for her. That's, yeah. that's you, that's your personal brand, that's your marketing, that's your piece of something that you can put out there for credibility to show, yes, I have a website or at least a landing page on my website. Um, mm -hmm. And if you, and you can do that in tandem with the social media page focused on the book. If you can't do the website, at least have a Facebook group or a Facebook page where people can go for updates, they can share it. And that's, that's very important for your launch too, because you can direct people there to get the link get your Amazon launch day to, you know, get that bestseller status, to push it out there. Um, Instagram and TikTok are two other really important things. I think whenever it comes to books and authors, TikTok's hard because we can't do that for them. You know, I can write a script and I can give people ideas as to how to record themselves and what to say and what hashtags to use, but I can't be that author making that recording. And a lot of people aren't comfortable on camera. So, you know, those of us who have, well, my kids are older, but those of you who have teenagers and, and people who are into TikTok, tap into them, take advantage of them and have them help you create something so people can follow your book journey. Yeah, I love it when people get their families involved in this. And I think a lot of times, um, you know, spouses, kids, parents, like everybody's sitting there like waiting. So again, the answer is always no if you don't ask. So don't be shy about asking. Uh, your friends and family to help you out a little bit. I love the ideas. Um, and it sounds like just in general, just having an online presence is going to be a big help because obviously you can't be everywhere at once. So if at least if you have that online presence, the social media, the website, um, you know, something online where people can find you, then that's more places that they can run across your book. Absolutely. And your business card too. You know, if you have a business, and put your book on the back of your business card and description about what it is and, you know, a QR code. I mean, people are using QR codes like crazy now. Have a QR code where they can go to your Amazon page or to your website and learn more about your book and talk to people about it. Oh, here's my card. By the way, here's some information on my book on the back. I'm an author. And just, you know, hand it over. Yeah. And for people who have multiple books, um, you can use Linktree and put links on all of those books and then do a QR code to your Linktree that takes people to all the links. So, right. the, you know, hook everything up that way. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for joining me today. You have a wealth of information that you shared. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody watching will love it too. Um, so I'm going to say goodbye and let you go back to the green room. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for having me and congratulations. This is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Well, that was a wonderful show with Kelly talking about little uh, imposter syndrome stuff, a little bit about PR, but all about visibility for your book and how you can be getting out there, making sure that you're sharing about it and letting the world know that you are actually an author. 
So make sure you join me again next week, uh, 7 Pacific time, 10 a.m. Eastern time. That's my time because I'm in Pittsburgh. Um, make sure that you're joining me again next week. We'll have another fantastic guest on. Thank you for joining me. I made a mistake. Thank you for joining me today. You can learn more about me, my products, and services at auroracorealispublishing.com. Make sure to join me for another episode every Wednesday at 7 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Central on my globally recognized show, Page Turner's Studio with Corey.